Oh, that wasn't even the end of our day. Um, we don't have enough money to go to the roadside market. Let's go to the metal vendor, because we've gotten a couple from the quest. Now I can afford one of those 15 metals. Alright. So now, recover health after every negotiation, recover resolve after every battle. Or, flourish gain from dealing damage, flourish gain from receiving damage. Yeah, I think what we're going to do... I feel like... I would like if you lose a negotiation it puts you in a shitty situation but it's not like a game over so I think it's more helpful to recover health after negotiations because health is the one we can't lose if we lose a, a battle we're pretty boned alright let's go tell fish we got the goods I was about to say the bar is so empty, but it's because we took the bartender with us. Here you go, fish. Here it is, fish. One box of pure contraband. Just uh, make, make sure to wash your hands after plugging it in. Wash my hands? Why? Eh, don't worry about it. It's probably fine. You'd look good with a few extra warts anyway. You're a good kid, Sal. Now go on. Get some rest. I'll get to work on the bar. Um, I don't think... It can't be another case of us getting attacked, right? Even if we do get attacked, we're actually in a really good spot on health, so I'm not super worried about it. We can just call it a day on day three here. Fish disables the alarm long enough for you to slip through the curtain. Home at last. Your bed calls to you. Your dreams are full of lumen-laced black water. All right. Fairly straightforward day three. Not a whole lot of social interaction, though, for day three. Something about the sunlight here feels murky and thick, like a sludge tide. But there's no use sleeping in. You only just uh, you only just got back to the Grifflands, and already you've made yourself an enemy too powerful to ignore. Nothing for it but to forge ahead and hope you can make some allies to match. When you come out of your room in the morning, Fish looks noticeably uncomfortable. Hey, Sal, you have a visitor. Oh. Yeah, it's a good setup you have here. Booby traps and fish with her eye on the door. Not bad for Derek. Nice to see you too, Nadan. You want a drink? Hmm, maybe next time. Time for you to prove your worth. I got a big job for you tonight. It needs your full attention, so come to me when you're ready to focus. You do this, and do it right? Bash, I'll help you take down Kashio myself. So tomorrow's the big day, is it? You better get ready for it. I got a couple more jobs you can do to prepare. Find me when the sun goes down, and I'll tell you what you need to know. Oh boy. All right, we're getting close. All right there, Sal. We sure are. What was that? Never seen you squirm so much. I always like the ripped jaw look on characters. It's such an immediate way to make someone a tough guy, um, which is one of the reasons I really like it for Nadan's character, because Nadan, like... He's a criminal and he's fairly ruthless, but he's like actually way more laid back than most of the people in Griftland. So it's kind of a funny, it's kind of a funny juxtaposition because he looks grisly. Have you seen that face? All humans are a little bit gross, but that's a whole nother level. Ow. Oh, don't act like you don't know. You were always goofy looking. You made up for it by being the smartest damn kid in the whole bog. You must be in on the Spark Baron's payroll. Ash, no. The drinks were flat and the rations were stale. Plus, I hated hunting trance. They were just honest folk trying to get by. Kashio hated it too. Not the same. What I hated was stepping on the worker. What she hated was being stepped on by the barons. If I'd have known that at the time, well, maybe I would have tried harder to get your parents out of the bog before things got out of hand. Or at least bought your bond myself. Huh. I'm guessing... Uh, I guess I'm paying you back for my parents' debts would have been a bit better than Derek. Ugh, never mind. I would have fed you to the Yotes. Then you'd be even uglier. That's pretty fun. Alright, what jobs we got on the docket? A challenging quest, friend or fanatic. It's a battle and a negotiation. Full five-star difficulty. Um, by Yeb Boy. 
So obviously if our ya boy has offered a reward, we gotta really consider about that one. A battle quest called Competing Bids. Spots wants you to track down and capture Kregan, but has uh, been cagey about the details, which would heal us for 30 health or 15 resolve. Get four metal and some shills. A battle element is trying to track down some stolen goods and needs you to track some leads. Upgrade a card, 125 shells and four metal. Yeah, I, I think I think we're gonna do the challenging quest. I think we can do it. I've been fairly I've been fairly smooth in most of our competitions thus far, so I'm willing to give it a shot. Plus, I want to go see ya boy. Who is yeah boy? There's yeah boy. Yeah boy, if I had known that was what your hat looked like, I might not have done it. Oh yeah boy, and spots are both here. Um, we do have Feldspar here, so if we have any kind of issue here in the bar, it'll actually turn out in our favor because we'll gain a, uh, a buddy. You have always a tendency of showing up in unexpected places, but it's fun to announce his arrival. See, they knew I'd want to say his name. Didn't think my day would involve a grifter dealing. You're a hunter, right? So you do jobs for pay? Not all jobs. And only for certain amounts of pay, but yeah, you've got the idea. My friend Ionis was on a mission through the more rugged parts of Murder Bay, but I haven't heard from her in days. She's a Luminari trained in combat. It's hard to believe that some miscreants managed to get the jump on her. Is that the one that we double-crossed to get the relic? But she's missing all the same. I petitioned the priest in Supplicate City to investigate, but I'll worry they'll come too late. Will you look for her? I still think this is worth it. I think we'll give it a go. A job for pay. Get yourself a deal. Thank you, Hunter. This is a huge relief. May your path keep to the shallows. Uh, but about that, let's talk a minute, shall we? I am going to need a little more money. He's only got 10 resolve for this. We're going to ice him. Oh, I see. You got to get rid of this stuff to get more money, and then he's an easy turn. So 9, 11, and 5. I think we can still pretty much kind of run the gamut on him here. So let's see. This will deal an additional 3 damage. So that'll get me a little bit more money. And then do I want the three composure or extra draws? I don't even think he's attacking yet. He's already got an impatience out. Damn, that was fast. Add three resolve and shield to a friendly argument at the start of Yeboi's turn. Okay. Let us still have influence after this. This will let me improvise two cards. I think we're still able to just be done right here. Thank you, sir. I'll be taking my money now. Um, oh, and we get that counts for the health thing. Oh, and if nothing else, it's just an extra uh, negotiation battle, so it helps our graphs. Duplicate the first argument now becomes duplicate the first two arguments. I like that a bunch. Draw three, remove composure, double composure. We don't need it. Fine, I'll give you an extra 134 shills if you finish the job. That's like double the original job. Yeah, that's awesome. That's quite a bit. That comes to 259 shills. You better not fail. No problem, sir. We'll be on our way. All right, that means we got to go chase him down. The road ahead is blocked by a group of Admiralty officers. Hold it. This here's a toll road. It is? Since when? Since the ink spitters up at headquarters said so. The toll's 100 shills. I mean... That's the whole thing I just negotiated. No. 100 shills. Do I look like I'm made of shills? 
You want to use the road? You got to pay. Doesn't matter what you look like. I'm not prejudiced. Then what if I don't want to use the road? All right. Get that guy out there. I have three left. I am taking damage right from jump here. Let's go ahead and use our two simple pleas. Which will then be able to get returned to us by using visionary rebuttal. Two actions left. Gain two bonus actions next turn. Incept free vulnerability. I'd rather have the two bonus actions. And then we're going to take the defense just because I don't know how many other things we're going to have to do today. I don't want to be taking a ton of damage early in the day. Interrogate's going to F up my influence. So we got to ice it. So let's get our extra draws. Gain three composures. Let's ice this guy. Because that'll keep my influence alive. And now it'll allow me to keep my composure up to soak that damage. There we go. The last play wasn't purely necessary, but I don't mind doing it for the experience on the card. And now we need more influence because right now the issue we're running into is I don't have enough influence to make sure that we keep all of our buffs up. All right, we're going to gain two vulnerability. Which means these should do hella damage. So that's 12 for you. 12 for you. It's a lot, Schneider. I could probably be going slower in explaining it more. Um, but like you just you get into such a rhythm that it just you reach a point where you kind of know. I mean, it's like any other card game, right? Like if you know the rules, you just wind up being able to fly through it. But the, the crux of it is when we're in negotiation mode with the deck I've built for sale, as long as we have influence, which is one of those arguments, those things you see floating around my character on the radial, as long as I have influence by diplomacy cards, which are the green cards, they do max damage. So I need to keep that up and I need to have stacks of them. Uh, otherwise, I wind up in a ton of trouble because I have to deal with wild ranges in the damage I can do. Um... So again, we I'd love the extra damage from this, but what we'd want to do is make sure that we don't lose influence as we're stacking it. So we're going to turn simple plead on to get rid of the influence costs. Next card this turn costs zero actions. That's kind of nice if you can use it to. If you can use it to get a card that costs more, but we don't have a ton of that. We don't need more draw because we already have Tactical Mind in our deck. Yeah, so the only reason this would be worth it is if we could turn it into a zero cost because that's just basically a free bonus turn. But that seems like an unnecessary thing to add if it's just meaning that we're going to save potentially one because what else is in the deck that I would need? Maybe appeal to reason. We don't have anything that costs really more than one. So it's not like a really good trade. I think we're just going to take the shells. What if I just stepped a little bit over there? Off the path and into the trees. What, in the brush? There's bugs and stuff in there. Terrifying. Would I have to pay the toll then? Huh. I suppose if... I can't see you, then you never really crossed. And it saves me some paperwork behind. Besides, the weird looks the other way while you slink into the trees. You travel through the brush for a spell before coming back out onto the main road. You check yourself over and find a cuddle beetle trying to lay its egg sac inside the cuff of your sleeve. Ugh. You wipe the slime out as best you can and keep going. Alright. Back on the hunt. I 
Ionis's trail leads you here, judging by the prints. She's likely lost her footing in a scuffle with bandits. You spot the telltale signs of a kidnapping. Follow it off the trail. You hear voices and melt back into the bush like a stalking yote. I know, man. The tolls are aggressive around here. Hey, this is Schlock. This is the guy. Yeah, this is definitely the guy we stole from. To your surprise, you don't find a bandit camp, but rather the Admiralty, with shoulders as stiff as their starched collars. It's nothing personal, Luminari. I don't want to hurt you. Not least because that would really piss in Hesh's waters. We just have to make a point as all. Well. The spree do this to travelers all the time, but the Annex can stop it. You chose your path, soldier. The cult will hear of this, whatever you... <laughs> Wasting my time. God damn it, y'all. I got, I got lands to grift. Sorry to say that that's the idea, pal. They'll just think it's the spree who did it. This isn't quite what you expected, but a rescue mission is a rescue mission. Better get to it. So we can either jump in, we would have to fight all of his buddies and we're the aggressor, or we can try and threaten Schlock, which is gonna make Schlock dislike me, but we're gonna, we're gonna be up against that either way. I'd rather do the negotiation to start with, and if we fail that, I think we still get a chance to fight. You step out of hiding and approach the guard, muscles flexing. Now, what was it you just said? It's nothing personal. I don't I don't want to hurt you. What the heck are you doing here? I'm about to serve up some divine retribution. Unless you want to hand over the Luminari. Ooh, so he hit me with a bunch of intimidates. At the end of your turn, in step two intimidated. Hostility cards deal an additional plus one damage. All right. So that's kind of shitty. And I will also say just straight up not true. I'm not intimidated by this man. Um, let's see here. So we want you for our influence. So now we have the two influences out that are gonna boost those cards. We also want boosted mind out. So now we're gonna draw extra cards. We're taking three incoming damage, but we're gonna gain three composure from talk fast. So now we should be damage free for the rest of the turn. Yeah, so I don't want to play the vulnerability inducing one because we're about to also get intimidated. So that would be a lot of extra incoming damage. We're going to have to be really careful with that. All right, so he's planted evidence on us, which will deal damage. So this one's set to go off for 10 damage. This influence is actually going to survive. So how do I want to do this? Spend one chosen card in your hand to gain composure. So let's make it so that this doesn't blow up on us and we get rid of one of the threats. Three actions remaining. Sort of flatter. Composure to all arguments isn't really necessary right now. Double my influence. All right, so we can just tee off this turn essentially. Let's get this to see if we can get a buff. Spend one influence, deals two bonus damage. Gain two influence, then deal damage. Let's do this one to get some more influence going. Simple plea. This will do extra damage. And then that'll do extra damage. Love it, love it. And we're getting close to another flourish. Targets all opponent arguments for two damage each turn. All right, that's got to go. Um, let's see. Improvise two cards. All right, let's buy time. We're going to lose a little bit of influence, but now we have a shitload of actions this turn. Draw three cards, incept vulnerability, incept flustered. I'd actually like to draw three cards, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Composure to all friendly arguments. So now this is no damage. This is no damage, no damage, no damage. All right. So his card does nothing now. I still think we want to take it off the board, but it's not as critical. Um, this will do... 
we do it in the other order. You're gonna be a zero cost, so you go and hit it for six. That'll wipe it and recoil. Three more actions. Gain an influence. This will let me attack and then improvise cards, which gets me back. Appeal of Reason, which is gonna hit for a shitload. A dud. What just happened that that all oh, by flourish awoke? Which I think we are gonna cash in, because look at this. He's got a shitload of stuff on the horizon. So let's use it. Yeah, so he's gonna be boned now. Um Yeah, I don't even need to double the influence and risk the vulnerability. We'll just keep shipping. Well, so that's the thing, Shinada, is with the way this game works, where like you get the graphs that are promoting some some additional power, and then you get to kind of control how your cards mature. Like if you're kind of building towards a central theme, it's no different than like Pokemon trading card game and Magic the Gathering. If you can develop synergies, you wind up in a situation where your cards become very potent when played in the right combinations. Simple plead. Really should have played the level playing field since we knew we were going to be teeing off, but that's fine. I need something that's going to let me give composure to another card. Spend one influence. Gain two. Well, all right, that'll work anyway. Yeah, so we're gonna take a chunk of damage here. I think we're gonna take like seven damage. Cause he's gonna blow this up for 10. Yeah. Oh, I took eight cause we had intimidated. That's all right, he's fucked here. Let's see. All right. Attack for six. Doesn't really matter the order I do in this end because he's going to be boned regardless. So is there anything... Is there anything that we want to gain experience with? Calling in favors we can get an experience on for free. Backpedal. We can call one in. And then we can use Appeal to Reason and that should level up. Beautiful. All right, so we can either make it cost less or we can have it hit harder. It's already costing one less for each influence we have and we regularly have four influence up. So we want boosted appeal because now that thing's gonna hit like a truck. And then what we got, airtight, erupt, and segue. So segue is draw one card, return the next card you play to this turn to your draw pile. That's kind of neat to do some like cycling. So like I can see there being utility in that to cycle our um, like do extra damage. Although that might be expending. Um, this is a hostility card, so we're gonna skip it. Airtight gain whenever you play a diplomacy card apply two composure to a random argument that's outrageously good for us because all we play is diplomacy cards the problem is how the hell like how often am i going to have three actions to use it with you can get it down to two with a level up i don't know that's i think that's too good to pass up that's an awfully nice card they say the tendrils of Hesh move in mysterious ways. Seems to me like you're about to get throttled by them. No, no I, I'm not. I, I was against this idea in the first place. The luminary's all yours. I, I, I'm a good Hessian. I am. The Admiralty book it for the hill. Oh, the Admiralty book it for the hills. Like the tentacles of Hesh itself. be snapping at their heels. I'm surprised Schlock didn't recognize me. Because the game's normally very good about if you have a character that draws a role in a random event at one point in the story and then you re-encounter them, they tend to remember those um, relationships. So I'm shocked that Schlock wasn't like, hey, wait, didn't you appraise the doodad? You untie the Luminari and help her find her footing. 
Didn't expect rescue to come from someone who looks like you, Drifter. Well, I didn't expect manners from Illuminari, so at least one of us knows where we stand. Let's go. Your boy is waiting for you. Alright, get her back to your boy. Hello, Sal. Here you go. One Luminari, alive and, well, alive. This one leaves puddles in her footsteps, I think, you boy. I'm unharmed. Ah, that's wonderful news. Thank you, Sal. Ash's tendrils truly quiver where you walk. That's... Thanks. What about my payment? Ah, yes, yes, of course. Profits to those who embrace the abyss. You paid 259 shields and five metal. All right, so we do have graph slots to play with in both situations. Whenever you play three manipulate cards in a row, deal four damage to a random opponent argument. Draw three extra cards at the start of every turn. At the end of your turn, take one damage for every card in your hand above three. That I'm not in love with. Whenever you apply bleed, restore one health. So none of these are actually really that helpful. And I don't want to take one and have it just take up a graft slot. So it's unfortunate that we didn't get better graphs that kind of jibe with what I'm doing more. But I think we're just going to take the shills. I would take mind spool. But the fact that this can turn into extra damage and we already draw so many cards in our negotiation fights, I don't think that this is going to be of any use to us. We're not doing anything with bleed. I don't three manipulation cards in a row. Do we even have manipulation cards? Yeah, I don't think we do. Ah, promoted. Th so they're the purple ones. One, two. We don't even have enough to play three of those in a row. That's outrageous. Oh, and Ionis loves us. We draw one extra start card at the start of negotiation. So probably good that we aren't drawing more than relying on getting them out of our hand. Yeah, high risk, high reward for sure. Um, because there are there are instances in which we could churn through. We have that card that lets us deal more damage with everything we play in a turn. We have that card that gives us more actions in a turn. But that would kind of be like banking on the hope of finding one big hand to kind of go ham with, um, but really being in trouble otherwise. Um, so we can, he's our friend now. He likes us. If we give him 200 shills, status cards cost one less action in battle. Not worth my 200 shills, friend. Does anyone else in here look like someone we should buy a drink for? Like most foremen, Bode prefers folks who can get the job done. I'd ask what you're up to lurking through the feud at night. But then you might ask me the same. Oh, he doesn't even want to drink. Alright, I can take a hint. We gotta meet up with Nadan anyway. It's uh it's time to do a job. Socialize with Leisha. Leisha's feeling friendly, spending time with her will restore one uh, ten resolve. So this would give us another friend, yeah? Who's Leisha? She's that bile broker chemist. So we'd get another social boon because she would wind up uh, loving us and we'd get the rest of our resolve back. Or your friend Kuga has found a juicy target to rob. So this sounds more monetary in game. This is for a little bit of healing going into whatever tonight's combat is on the negotiation side. I think Kuga's the really cool looking chick though. Yeah, Kuga's awesome. Kuga looks like my fantasy Skyrim characters. So I'm wondering if maybe it's worth it for that one. Although if we rob someone, I'm wondering if we might wind up with someone that hates us too. That could be double edge. Hmm. We could always earn back some resolve by getting drinks, but it would mean that we wouldn't get whatever leisha's social boon is looks like a tick i don't know how comfortable i am with that i think we're gonna go a robin we're buddies with kuga let's do some robberies it's the griflins there's really no thing as good guys and bad guys there's just people sal you want work 
Little birdie told me that a nice fat target is headed this way, with enough shills to line both our pockets. Better still, apparently the idiot cheaped out on guards. Sounds like easy pickings. Why loot me? Uh, because you're my pal? What kind of question is that? Besides, you got away with words. And if it comes to blows, you got away with your fists, too. What do you say? I'm in, Kuga. Hash yeah. I love mixing business with pleasure. Right? I'll follow your lead. Kuga makes for the shadows at the edge of the road, and you quickly follow. Target doesn't look too rich, though. Despite what Kuga said, he's nothing more than bedraggled. All the same, you step onto the path once you have him where you want him. See, Schneider, now we get to be the one in charge of tolls. Hold it there, friend. Oh, it's gold! It's the dude I just tried to buy a drink for! What? What is this? So we can just have Goad give us his money, and he'll dislike us. If we attack him, he'll hate us, and it's a much bigger fight. We're going to just let him on his way. Hail, citizen. We're just some friendly tax collectors looking for contributions to road maintenance. You sick of all this mud? Well, we're here to change that. You're going to get rid of the mud? One squelch at a time. It'll only cost uh, approximately all of your money. All right. Intimidates. Sal knows how things work around here. Gave us a dominance, which doesn't really help our position at all. All right. We are going to expend one of the Intimidates to get a composure up to guard against that argument. Now we need to play this. So with our battle graft, which one is it? Duplicate the first two arguments you create every negotiation. So this one will get doubled and we'll get two influence pools. And then this one will get doubled and we'll get two bonus draw pools. So that kind of sets us up for the combat ahead. Gain one influence and three damage. Let's improvise because we might be able to get composure. Gain two bonus actions next turn. Let's take that because we could wind up with a really big turn. And we haven't drawn our thing that does an extra damage for every item. So we're going to take one damage here, but that's all right. We'll live. And I think we're going to have to go to fishes and maybe buy a drink to get back some composure before the next, uh, the next step in the quests. All right, let's see. We did get our plus three damage to everything. This is also a chance for us to get that air tight out on the field because we have so many action points this turn, but I don't think it's worth playing both of these because we're going to use up four of our actions. So the question is, do I want to get air tight out and potentially start that towards leveling? Let's do that because that's going to help keep us defensive and it gives us an extra point on um, airtight's leveling. Um, let's see. An opponent for three damage every turn. Let's get this out of here. And we'll get composure in the meantime. And now that is still going to go, unfortunately. Do you have any influence? Do I need to keep the bonus to draw? I don't know that I do. I think I want to start putting damage on him. Yeah, that's the better play. That was a decent clip of damage. And like we lose the one bonus draw, but that's not exactly. Oh, we don't lose it. We got we got the extra defense on it from playing airtight. So it stuck around. Love it. Love it. All right. We're taking damage. One of our influence pools is taking damage. Let's nuke that. Why did the carryover hit me? That was interesting. Two extra actions. I don't know that I care about that. Simple pleads. They can go for sure. Spend one influence, deals two bonus damage, and hits all arguments. Or gain two. We're going to gain two influence here. Double our influence. This influence is about to get wiped out. And I can't even save it with wide deflection. Um. Well, no, wait. I can save it. 
Do I care about doubling my influence enough to take vulnerability? I don't think I do. But I want levels. Spend two influence to gain two actions. I know that's useless because I can't even use the actions I just spent, but it's worth it. Hostility cards deal an extra plus four damage. Okay, that's just what I'm getting from having tried to intimidate him. We can expend another one here. So we'll get this other Intimidate out of here and gain some composure to guard. Three actions remaining. So we'll get both of our simple pleads back. He's attacking our hostility, which winds up being fairly useless because I'm not using hostile cards. So that works out to our benefit for sure. Oh, I should have used level playing field. I wasn't paying close enough attention. We'll use the two sparing intrigues because they're going to hit like trucks with the double. When destroyed, Sal's poor argument gains 10 composure. Will I keep that composure at the end of the fight? Because that would be outstanding. That would be very interesting. All right, let's do this. Let's try and get it out of here. And I'm going to get some influence from my trouble. Oh, just composure. Right. Okay. Not resolve. I wasn't understanding it well enough. So that wound up being like a massive overplay. But that's fine. This will let us get rid of another Intimidate so we can start getting those out of there. This is doing six damage a turn now. We need that out. All right, we're going to do plus three damage with everything we do this turn. It's time to start going a little ham. I think we could just finish it out here. Yeah. All right. Gold dislikes us. When I first read it, I thought it said God dislikes us. And I was like, that sounds right. So another plead that can turn into simple plead... Man, that's really tempting. Brainstorm. No, I don't want to fatten the deck up any more than we already have. So what do you say, helpful citizen? Fancy contributing to the cause? Because if not, who's to say the mud won't swallow you up? That'd be a damn shame. Hey, hey, I, I, I get it. I'm no fool. Enough's been said. Take it, and I'll be on my way. Uh... Assuming assuming that's the deal? Why, of course. I'd never impede someone so helpful and accommodating as yourself. Off with you now. And watch out for mud. Code makes a hasty exit. Damn, Sal. That was way easier than stabbing them in the eye. <laughs> so we can take 180, 45, or 360. But then Kuga will hate us. So we're going to just take our fair share. Well... On to the spoils, what do we get? The take is good. Let's split a 50-50. You had the lead, but I did the legwork. Got it, Sal. Always a pleasure working with you. See you on the burnt side, friend. Kuga heads off down the road, whistling a tune. You're sure is off key. All right, so that wound up being a decent amount of money. So let's head to the roadside market and see what's what. Uh, let's talk to Graft Man. I keep telling you, these graphs are made for some of your talents. So let's see. Negotiation graft at the start of your turn, steal up to four composure from a random opponent argument. That's kind of nice. Because not only is that giving me composure, but it's stripping it from something that they have. 
Whenever you play four diplomacy cards in a row, apply one composure to all friendly arguments. Um, we would certainly trigger that often, but how much is a single composure ultimately worth? Or brain spur, that's 300 shills. Your first card played every turn also damages an additional random opponent argument. Ooh. So that's not bad. Because then all those turns that we have to sit there and I'm trying to burn down one of their arguments so that we can get back to fighting their core argument, we can get away from doing that. What about battle graphs? Snap talent, your attacks deal two bonus damage to targets with bleed. Man, I really, it wanted me to make a bleed deck so much for this run. Bleed decays 33% at the end of the turn instead of 50. Or at the start of each battle, improvise a random item card. I don't think any of those are worth it. I, I do think this brain spur, as long as I'm smart about my first card played. So let me think about that. First card played... That would mean that I'd have to give up bonus damage on the first card played if I wanted to use it in the same turn as our deal an extra three damage. But the upside is anytime I'm not using that, we're getting way more utility out of it. Heading to bed, enjoy your sleeps, my friend. I hope it is very restful. I will indeed kick some ass. We're gonna see if we're gonna see if Sale can't bring Cassio to justice. We're gonna take this brain spur. And so then the question becomes, do we want to get another negotiation slot just in case? 150 shills, we'd lose some health. I mean, I'm already trouncing negotiations. We have not really had difficulty even with me taking on people with way higher negotiation resolve scores. But I think we're going to take a pass. I don't I can't bring myself to buy another pet we already had a pet and I lost it that's my that's my curse um we would restore our 15 resolve which we're down 12 so that's mostly worth it but we're gonna get some stuff I think this is worth it because I don't know what we're gonna run into on this Nadan job so hopefully we'll have a chance to nuke those two um those two cards and then lastly we got 15 metal again let's do the opposite of the one we've already done and now we're also going to recover resolve when we have fights love it love it all right let's see what it does